एस चांद प्रेजेंस एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम वेलकम टू एस चांद अकेडमी आई डॉक्टर नीलम विल बी टीचिंग यू टूडे कन्फर्मल मैपिंग Welcome back to the second part of the video. For more details, you can refer to the book from S. Chan Publishing. Details are given on this side. Link is given in the description box. So, in the first part, we have learned what do we mean by trans uh, transformation equation. Uh, we have also learned uh, what do we mean by Jacobian, and then we have learned about the definition for the conformal mapping, and we have understood with the help of a figure that what do we mean by the conformal mapping. Now we will take one example to make it more clear that when we will say that a, a particular complex transformation is conformal mapping or not. So. In the previous part of the video, we have taken one example, w equals to z square, to make it clear that how a transformation takes place from x y plane to u v plane. We will check whether this transformation, this transformation, is conformal or not. Transformation is conformal or not. So. Uh, what was the condition for conformal mapping? That f z should be analytic. So here, f z is z square. So we have already resolved that in the real and imaginary part in the previous video. So it is x square minus y square plus twice iota x y. And we are, uh, if we look at them, then they are the polynomial form. So they are analytic. So we can say that the first condition is true. So f z is analytic. If z is analytic everywhere. Second condition is we need to check whether f dash, uh, e uh, f dash z is equal to 0 or not. So with this we need to check. So from this we can say that f z is equals to z squared. So from this we can say that f dash z is coming out to be 2 z and f dash z will be 0 at z equals to 0. So this is the only point where f dash z is 0. So we can say that at rest of the points, this uh, f dash z will not be 0, except at z equals to 0. So we can say that this w equals to z square is conformal everywhere, is conformal everywhere, except except this point z equals to 0. So we need to mention this point for sure that it is not conformal at z equals to 0. If we change the question that check whether this transformation is conformal at z equals to 0, then the answer would have been that no, it is not conformal at z equals to 0. But if we have been asked to find out whether this transformation is conformal or not, so we need to write that w equals to z square is conformal everywhere except z equals to 0. So that's how we will check whether the given transformation is conformal or not. Now second is, next in the row is Mobius transformation. So Mobius transformation. So Mobius transformation is that the transformation W equals to AZ plus B divided by CZ plus D is said to be the Mobius transformation if AD minus BC is not equals to 0. So uh, this is said to be the Mobius transformation if this condition is true. That is AD minus, AD minus BC is not 0. This should not be 0. Now there will be few forms of uh, Mobius transformation. So there are some transformations which can be derived from this Mobius transformation. So in the row, the first is translation. So translation is w equals to z plus beta, where beta is a complex number. Beta is a complex number. So it can be written as that beta is nothing but beta 1 plus iota beta 2 type. So if we look at this one, 
So this is W equals to Z plus beta. So if we resolve it into real and imaginary part, this is coming out to be X plus beta 1 plus iota Y plus beta 2. That means in the UV plane, when we will compare it with UV plane, so U is coming out to be X plus beta 1 and V is coming out to be Y plus beta 2. So we can see that there is a translation that is X point has been transformed to X plus beta 1 where beta 1 is constant and V uh, uh, has been transformed from Y to Y plus beta 2 where this is a uh, beta 2 is a constant. So we can see that there will be a shift and it, the direction of the shift will be decided based on the signs of this beta 1 and beta 2. If beta 1 is negative, x will be shifted uh, towards left. If beta 1 is positive, x will be shifted to right. So, such a transformation is called translation transformation. So, second transformation is called rotation transformation. Second transformation uh, comes the rotation transformation. So this we can say that W equals to Z e raised to the power iota theta naught where theta naught is a constant. Theta naught is a constant. So if we resolve it into a real and imaginary part then we can say that W we know that the W can be written as R e raised to the power iota theta. So we can uh, see this. Let us make this uh, uh, substitution that z can be replaced with z e raised to the power iota theta and w we will make separate notation e raised to the power iota phi. So if we substitute it e r e raised to the power iota phi and is equal to r e raised to the power iota theta into e raised to the power iota theta naught is already given. So we can see that r e raised to the power iota phi is r e raised to the power iota theta plus theta naught. Because of the presence of this uh, theta naught, there is a rotation in theta, in the value of theta. So, value of theta, value of the angle has been changed from theta to theta plus theta naught in UV plane and there is no change in this radius. Therefore, this type of transformation is called rotation transformation because the sign of this theta naught will be deciding the rotation that it is counterclockwise or clockwise. That is why it is called rotation transformation. Now the third one is stretching. So stretching can be uh, given as e, uh, W equals to alpha Z where alpha is a complex number. Alpha is a complex number. So it can be written as alpha equals to alpha 1 plus iota alpha 2. So we can say that if we resolve the real and imaginary part, so it is u plus iota v is equal to alpha 1 plus iota alpha 2 and it is x plus iota y. So we can see that there will be a stretching in this uh, uh, in the uh, coordinates from x y plane to u v plane. You can resolve this into real and imaginary part. We have already done it for three four questions. So now it is very very clear that there will be when the value of the x y uh, will be substituted in x y plane, and for those values of x y, u values of u and v will be calculated. We will find that there will be a stretch in the values of the u and v. Number fourth is inversion. So as the name indicates, there will be an inversion type of function. So it is w equals to 1 over z. So we will be using this, uh, the form e raised to the power iota phi is equal to 1 over r e raised to the power iota theta. So if we write it in this form e raised to the power iota phi is equal to 1 over r e raised to the power minus iota theta. So in this one we can see that the radius r has been changed from r to 1 over r and this angle phi has been replaced with minus theta. So that is why this is called the inversion transformation. So all these transformation we can check uh, by uh, that uh, how they are mapping from one uh, coordinate system to another coordinate system that is x y plane to u v plane. Now you can uh, 
you can solve one question that uh, the inversion the inversion made uh, transformation maps straight line straight line in two circles so we can see that you know uh, it's not necessary that if it is a straight line in xy plane then there it is going to be a straight line in uv plane no this inversion transformation it maps uh, a straight line into circles in uv plane similarly we can find out mapping for many more questions so if we take one question that w equals to z plus 1 by z so first of all we need to check whether it is conformal mapping or not so we need to check whether w equals to fz uh, uh, w equals to z plus 1 over z is conformal or not conformal or not and then if it is conformal then find out the uh, figure in the xy plane and uv plane so uh, it has fz can be written as z plus 1 over z so fz uh, can be written down as x plus iota y and plus 1 over x plus iota y so it can be resolved into real and imaginary parts and it is analytic everywhere so uh, we can check whether f dash z is 0 at some point or not so it can be checked that 1 minus 1 over z is square so it is z is square minus 1 over z is square and it is clear that f dash z is 0 at z equals to 0 so it is not conformal at z equals to 0 and at rest of the points it is uh, always conformal and we can leave it as a question for you that you can find out that it maps what shape into which shape so uh, you can take some figure in xy plane and uh, which which satisfy this transformation which satisfy this transformation and then we can find out the image of that corresponding to xy plane in the uv plane so in this uh, in today's video we have learned why, how do we write transformation equation what do we mean by conformal mapping when a mapping is said to be conformal mapping how to check whether the given con given mapping is conformal mapping or not then we have learned about uh, some of the uh, mobius transformations which are uh, translation rotation stretching and inversion transformation and then we have learned that how to find out the figure uh, in which the uh, figure in xy plane has been mapped into uv plane for in-depth knowledge of the subject you can refer to the book from eschant publishing details of which is given on this site and link is given in the description box please do like share and subscribe the video and press the bell icon for notification for upcoming videos thank you very much All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.